Today on Mormon Times, a look at the life of Sister Frances B. Monson, wife of Thomas S. Monson. Reflect back with us on her extraordinary example of a life well lived. Then see how this successful foster family was transformed into a forever family. And I love them all, just as if I'd given birth to them. How love can make all the difference in a child's life. I've only been in this house for three years, but it feels like I've been here forever. Plus a story that will inspire you to be a little better. We've been able to learn happiness in spite of what's been taken away. Two little girls taken too early and the grieving family who immediately offered forgiveness. Welcome to Mormon Times. Today, we honor and pay tribute to Sister Frances B. Monson, wife of President Thomas S. Monson. She passed away on Friday morning in a Salt Lake City hospital. She was 85 years old. She will forever be remembered for her kind heart and her sustained support of our dear prophet. Frances Beverly Johnson was born on October 27, 1927. She grew up in Salt Lake City, was graduated from East High School and the University of Utah. While a student at the U, she and her friends were riding a streetcar, and she was introduced to a young man named Tom Monson. Frances Johnson married Thomas S. Monson in the Salt Lake Temple in October of 1948. She described the first time her parents met him to an audience at a BYU women's conference. She joined the wives of the then first presidency and their daughters. She said her father showed Thomas Monson a picture of a missionary named Monson and asked, do you know him? Thomas Monson said, yes, that's my grandfather. My uh, father was just thrilled. He thought, oh, we knew him. He was a missionary in our home in Sweden and helped convert my mother and father and 12 children. By that time, he was in, so. <laughs> the three Monson children, Tom, Anne, and Clark, were all born in the 1950s. He could not do what he does without my mother's support. And he knows that he has that support. And he's known that he's had that his whole their whole married life. My mother's a fabulous listener, and yet she'll come in periodically and give her viewpoints when he, he's talking to her. And so they're a wonderful team with one another. I maintain Thomas Monson wouldn't be who he is without Francis. Frances Monson had to share her husband first with the neighborhood as he was called to be a bishop at age 22, then with the world as they moved to Canada where he served as mission president at age 32, and then as an apostle at age 36. He spent a great deal of time away from his family. Some of that time spent in East Germany where the church built a temple in Freiburg in 1985. Sister Monson told a BYU audience that not long afterwards, she and President Monson traveled to Germany to visit the Latter-day Saints. It was the most spiritual and fantastic meeting I've ever attended to see families reunited again after 40 years of being uh, separated. President and Sister Monson cared for and visited the sick and elderly of all faiths for decades. In 1998, the Sisters of Charity honored President and Sister Monson, who were at St. Joseph Villa often. Sister Monson admired the adult daycare, assisted living, and long-term care facilities. And I think they should, uh, people should really appreciate what they do. That is something that is absolutely necessary to have facilities like that, and they, they do a good job. I don't think God is too particular about the creeds of this person or that person, but it comes down to caring for the sick and comforting the lonely and giving them hope in a better life. I think the world of all with whom I've met at St. Joseph. President Monson's loving nature is most evident with his family, particularly with his devoted wife, Frances, who had a serious fall in 2001. After mom was in that coma, lying in the hospital for three weeks, dad conducted all his business from a waiting room in the hospital. And he sat up there hour after hour, day after day, prayerfully exerting faith 
that he could have his companion. Sister Francis Monson was by his side as he became president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at temple dedications, for graduation exercises, always united in purpose and love for one another. Sister Monson was a wonderful woman. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Monson family. We will post news about her funeral arrangements on our website at mormontimestv.ksl.com. We'll be right back with more on Mormon Times. There is such a need for loving homes for children who don't have one. In Utah alone, nearly 1,400 foster families came to the rescue, offering twice that many children a place to call home. For Rob and Kim Gerlach, it's given them the family they've dreamed of, and all it took was love and a big leap of faith. Oh. Looking at the Gerlach family, Go away. <laughs> you'd think they'd been together for years. We went 10 years praying for children. Kim and Rob's four children all arrived in the past four years as foster children. These are children who want to be loved. They just need and want a family. We committed to being these boys' permanent family before we really ever even met them. There was a lot of prayer involved in that decision. Little Annabelle is the newest addition. Her sister, four-year-old Clara, came first, followed by Ibrahim and Ikum, now ages 16 and 18. So we went from a little girl potty training to this teenage boy who was interested in girls and wanted to learn to drive, and we didn't know what we were doing. The Gerlachs knew their teenagers were fragile. I was scared of going to different families. I hated moving around because um, I was a people person. I, I grew so close to people. When we got Ecom, he came into our home ready to make an attachment, ready to be part of a family. I was really mournful for a long time, really uh, depressed, stressed out. I put a lot of it on me. Some of these children come from homes uh, where there's been significant neglect, and they haven't learned basic skills like hygiene, uh, like food preparation. Yeah, they've been through really <laughs> difficult stuff, but they've come through on top, and they've grown from it, and they've learned from it, and they're really strong kids. They're good kids. Kim and Rob did not push their LDS religion on Ecom, but he soon chose to be baptized. Both boys easily made friends. And they're very easy to like. They're very easy to, to feel, you know, attached to. And yes, they're normal teenagers. Our friends uh, who live around us here have done a really good job of teaching us that uh, no child is perfect and that every parent has challenges associated with raising children. And faith played a huge part of what came next, adoption. I joked with someone that I feel almost like that ceiling did something to their DNA that made them like physically mine as well. And Kim knows the children are not only theirs, but God's. And that he knows them and loves them more than, than we can under, ever understand. And that, and that if we rely on him, then whatever problems we face with these kids will come through. They've just really enhanced our marriage and, and our relationship and taught us to be stronger and rely on each other more. They pushed me to strive to do things better in my life. One of the things that's been really exciting about the way our family has come together is that our children come from so many different backgrounds. They add a, a richness and a depth to your family history that, you know, isn't there just from the two of you. They make me feel at home. Like, it really is a family to me. It's no different from any other family that you see or look at. Like, they treat me like their son. You know, they've, they've taught us a lot on the way that, that all, you have to, all you have to know how to do is, is to love. great family. May also happens to be National Foster Care Month. If you're interested in getting more information or becoming a foster parent, we'll link you to Utah's foster care website through ours. Just go to mormontimestv.ksl.com. Well, three years ago, a Layton family experienced unimaginable loss. Two of their daughters died just days apart after a technician placed a dangerous pesticide too close to the family's home. Well, Nathan and Brenda Toon recently spoke with Brooke Walker about the faith and forgiveness that it took to work through such a difficult trial and their example can inspire us all. Looking in on this happy family, it might be hard to put your finger on what's missing, but the Toon family lives with a feeling of emptiness every single day. Does someone always feel like they're missing? Yes. Yes. 
In February of 2010, the entire Toon family, Nathan, Brenda, and their four children, became ill from what they initially thought was food poisoning. When four-year-old Rebecca took a turn for the worse, she was rushed to the hospital, where she later died. I was confident that everyone else would be okay because there was no way that I would be able to withstand losing another child. But just three days later, the unthinkable, 15-month-old Rachel passed away too. It was the very lowest time of my life. Investigators determined the girls died after pest control technician Cole Knox placed rat poison too close to the Toon's home. In the midst of their grief, the Toon family did something no one expected. I don't think that we will have any sort of long-term anger. They immediately expressed forgiveness. How were you able to find the word forgiveness so soon? I felt that desire to forgive just hours after Rebecca passed away. And I think part of it has to do with wanting to be the kind of person that my daughters can still be proud of. That it was not the Toon family credits Even their so faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ as the reason they were able to forge through such a difficult time. I feel like a lot of people, they've like either been like they've had hardships in their lives and they've stayed with the church because they figured that trials are good for you and they strengthen your testimony. And I feel like that's happened with our family. I know that I will be able to be with them again because my parents were married in the temple and we can be a family forever because we were sealed together as a family. And I'm really grateful for that. There have been days when, when my faith and in God and my Savior have been the only thing that has brought me comfort. I have so much more vivid of an appreciation for the atonement that he made for not only our sins, but our sorrows. And I have learned so much gratitude to him because that atonement makes it possible for my family to receive the blessings of being together in the afterlife. It takes a lot of faith to have your prayers answered. It takes a different kind of faith when your prayers aren't. Having faith and asking for a miracle and not getting the miracle you ask for. And then still being able to marshal that faith to show up the next Sunday. That's an extra commitment to the Lord. Even though I would trade it, I would get my girls back any way I could. I feel like I've learned that, that you can have faith even when your prayers aren't answered. And it's made me, ironically, fear death less. Now I have something to look forward to. I have two little girls who are waiting.